I know it's just a very simple act of turning a car on and reversing it about two and a half meters, but the fact this car fought me for so long and now it starts up so easily, that cold start you saw just then was the first time this car has run probably a month, I guess. The battery's on a battery tender, it's constantly on charge and the battery's disconnected, so the battery's always good. But the fact it just cranks like that, it's just astonishing. What a great old bus this thing is. Right, let's get on with today's work. Oh, and if you're not familiar with this car and haven't seen it running previously, this is the old, oh, I can't remember what engine size it is. I think it's a 2.03, it's a 230E. Look how smooth this thing runs. I won't run it for long because there's no fan. Let's give it a little rev. Now you can see, you can actually see from the cobwebs how long it is since this thing has been in use. A Halloween spec just there. So right, if you've seen the last episode on this car, which was a few weeks ago now, the front end of the car is now fully welded, fully complete. It's all looking extremely good. Well, okay for me. Um, there's a little bit of doubling just needs to be done on the inside just to tidy things up the inner edges around where the accelerator pedal goes, but really that's just cosmetic and as far as I'm concerned, the front is done, apart from grinding the whole lot back down to bare metal, including all the old undercoat and things, just to get the whole thing back to clean metal and then make it all very nice, shiny, rust proof and black. But we'll do that at the same time as we do this. And so what we're doing on this corner today is we're gonna tackle this um, jacking point, which has gone as badly as the front one had done. So some heavy gauge steel, having cut this back, welded into here to make this solid and again rust free and up inside here there is quite a lot of not metal which I'm hoping once I've pulled out all the old bits of, of what used to be metal um, we can just plate in with a nice simple oh it's full of mud at the bottom that doesn't bode well um, nice simple repair yeah the fact I'm pulling it out with my hand is not not promising Right now, I am seriously ruining my decision to give away that yellow W123 to my friend Barry. I'm ruining it considerably. I'm wishing I'd given him this one to carry on with and taken the yellow one. Although this, one's got, this one has got a better engine with the fuel injection, so once I've done this welding, I will rue no more. Right, let's get this thing, well, let's get this thing jacked up. I can't really jack it up until I've fixed the jacking point, so it's a bit of a catch-22 there. Now before we get cracked into this, the nice folks at the Draper Press Office have seen me using all their tools in these videos and they'd sent me um, the heat induction tool for a review and a trial a while ago and it's, that's been one of the most useful things I own. Um, they saw me using a rival product welder and said would I like to give this one a go? This is a Draper Expert Multi-Weld 200A or 200 Amp. It's a lot smaller than the one I'm using at the moment, the big orange thing. It does MIG, TIG and MMA arc welding all in this one compact little box and so they said give it a go see if it's as good or hopefully better than the one you're using off Amazon which well that's been doing quite well so I've been saying I've been quite impressed with that orange thing that's a raw um, so yeah we'll give this a whirl and see how we get on with that it does look very advanced and clever possibly too clever for the likes of me we'll crack on and see how we go one thing I haven't updated though is this rubbish and I do mean rubbish McAllister uh, angle grinder thing this thing is just Oh, yeah, horrible. But, you know, we'll, we shall persevere. I might actually move this out for a moment because that's going to get showered with sparks in a second and that will be a bad thing. Well, the day is seriously running away with me. I, I don't know where it's gone. It's already like nearly two o'clock in the afternoon and I started this at about half past nine and so far I've got as far as jacking the car up. The phone keeps on ringing, emails keep coming in that need answering, lots going on outside of this job today. And also, the Alpha wouldn't start. Incredibly, I didn't film it because I was just trying to get the thing moved. Um, but weirdly, well, after I installed that new radio in it last week, it wouldn't start when I tried to go and drive it that evening. So I jump started and it was fine. And then the next day it wouldn't start again. And I did a test with the um, battery tester and it said the battery was no good. I was like, well, that's ridiculous. This isn't an old battery in this car either. So I disconnected the radio in case that was draining it, but I shouldn't have done because it was already flat before I'd done the installation thing. And uh, yeah, I had to jump start it to move it out of the way. That took an extra half an hour of kerfafflage. So yes, yeah, so now the car is in the air. It's on a solid point underneath there. Big jack, big safety, not going underneath it. So I'm not gonna chuck it right now. <sighs> so it looks like today we'll probably only wind up getting this jacking point sorted out and nothing else as it stands. Just cause the day has run away with me. Ugh, and I'm gonna do a new big spreadsheet thing to put on one of the walls on a whiteboard or something saying, 
when the MOTs are due, when they were last serviced, where I've stored them, and then I'm gonna add when the battery was changed onto it as well, because I seem to be getting through batteries at an insane rate. So I don't know what's going on there. Right, let's go, have a, I'll show you a close-up of this thing. It is disgusting. Right, there's only meant to be one hole just here, and it's meant to be that one. Everything else is superfluous hole. So let's cut this back to good metal, and then see what we've got. Right, important swig of tea before we begin. Quentin mugs are available in the Redbubble store. Oh, this thing is still rubbish. Okay, that looks a bit less terrifying now it's shiny metal, but you know, we can take a straight line back to there, straight line down there. The difficulty thing I found on the front one was, of course, was making a hole in the right shape for this blob here to go through. Right, cutty time. Right, I just made the, the mistake, I'm gonna call it a mistake here, of opening the door, because I thought, hmm, that little bit of rust goes behind a bit of rubbery trim. I don't want to be welding up behind a bit of rubbery trim. I'd better just peel that back or have a look behind it and see what's there. Turns out, very little is there. Ugh. Okay, at least the bit that goes straight inside there is solid. That, that structural part just there hasn't fallen apart just yet. We'd better get this kick plate off as well. See what's behind there, because that, oh, that's actually not as bad as I was expecting. I'm gonna go put that wire brush back on again because that is gonna be seeing some action again all of a sudden. My God. Well, we can now give you a bit more of a, a walk through of how bad this actually is. I mean, luckily it's really only the surface that's gone horribly, horribly badly wrong. It's interesting to see all there is of that structure of the jacking point because um, you can see how it's attached to the bottom of the uh, the sill just there, big heavy tube, and then a couple of braces going there. It really doesn't look strong enough to take the weight of the car, but I guess they knew what they were doing. Anyway, what we've got here is a clear shot into the uh, into the abyss, frankly. <laughs> this is the inside of the sill, so you can see all of that looking quite good on the back of it, but the front of it is a bit of a mess. Um, so we need to go and repair this area under here, wrap around there, hole for that, up to here and twistling around in here. So we've got flat under there, rolling up to the top there, hole cutting for that. Well, I guess we'll just do a complete straight thing, not trying to get too clever with the shapes. And then this is gonna be a bit awkward. This area here needs to be sculpted somehow into something that looks like, well, like it comes off a car. This stuff is for another day. When I just said this was a two-part video now, I was not kidding. This is absolutely 100% now a two-part video. Right, where's my gloves gone? I'm gonna try and put a blade in there. Oh, there's more holes just there as well, but I think I'll include that in the uh, wraparound at the back as part of that, that day's work. Oh, God. This is kind of depressing when you look at it like this. I know it looks horrible, but this is not the end of the world. This is just very, very annoying. That is a lot less metal than there should be in my hand. Right, so we've got a nice square hole now, which has been ground back, make it shiny in places, trimmed back, and a bit of heavier gauge than usual steel that I've shaped into that shape. Um, and the X marks the spot where I've got to drill a big old hole to do that. I think last time what I did was I drilled lots of small holes and then you know, just evaporated the metal slowly and snipped out the remains. It was a long and arduous battle. 
this is a pretty good fit, um, even though my finger's caught in there, and uh, quite snug and tight on these nice square edges. And it'll be a better fit once that is not pushing on the back of it. Just thought while I'm off fiddling making holes in bits of metal, it would be a good idea to put some rust converter in here to stop us doing any more of this in the meantime. I mean, this area here, I will have access to again when I'm working on all of this stuff, but this stuff in here and this stuff in here, I'm hopefully not going to see that again. Oh, God, every time I think I've got all the grot out, I find more grot. This is very, very thick metal I'm using in here. So the hole isn't too badly placed, it's not too badly sized either, it's just very raggedy so I'm going to go in with a big file and spend a few minutes making a hole a bit more nicer than that. It's held on with a magnet and luck at the moment but that's actually pretty close to the shape that I need it to be and it all works quite well. I'll try and fit that actually better before I start welding it. I have made a bit of a blunder, my shiny new draper won't get used today because whoops, I hadn't realised the bobbin or well, the spool for the bobbin is a different diameter to the bobbin on this one. That's a little narrow thing, that's a big fat thing. So I assumed it was an industry standard. So I have to crack on on this bit of welding with the old Amazon one and I'll uh, do the stuff inside the wing tomorrow or later in the week with the Draper one. Let's see how we get on in a direct comparison, if you like. Right, welding time. Right, I'm not buttoning up this bit here in the top corner just yet because I need to do all this area down here still so I think I might have to come back and do more work in the area before it's all done. So I'll finish up around the eel down there and call that a day for the moment. Ah, ue le spark. Ue le sparky. You see the sparky. Oh, still a bit warm. So there we go. This is what I'm going to call done for today. I'm not going to bother grinding it right now because there's a lot more grinding to do tomorrow. Well, the next day after probably when I move on to doing the massive tragedy that's waiting for me inside there, which is astonishingly big, but I'm hoping it's just going to be one very big single repair and not lots of patchy things. Well, there's gonna be some patchy things. I need to put a little corner on, on that bit. But thank you for joining me while we make this old Mercedes a little bit better every time. So next time it'll be even, even more better. And after the welding's finished, we can start with the brakes. We've made it go, we've made it solid. Now we can make it stop and then maybe get an MOT. No, we can't do that. There's loads more to do. Anyway, thanks for joining me and join me again next time. And I might start on the uh, Rover 200 as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs>